Okay, uh, part 20. Sounds like they're going to have uh, RPGs in this one. Bazookas. like that guy took care of that for me. Let's make my way back and see what was going on up there. off again. Sorry about that. Just wondering what this trail is going to lead to. Let's 
just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. sure how to disable that. Maybe it was that, uh, way back here, maybe it was, uh, that little building. This thing. Guess not.
The Nazis poured countless man hours and Reich marks into their various secret weapons programs, especially in the area of jet propulsion. Here, the airframe of a Messerschmitt 163 undergoes a somewhat successful test. The 162 Comet was an amazing little fighter, though it was often more dangerous to the pilots who flew it than it was to enemy bombers. But despite its drawbacks, the jet age had begun. Second medal I've got. Huh. Welcome back, Patterson. I hope you've had a chance to warm up after your visit to the North Pole. <laughs> because time is of the essence for this next mission. We're sending you to the Steinberg salt mine, located just outside of the Austrian village of Alt Aussee. The Third Reich has used the mine as its all-purpose safety deposit box, creating a vast cache of paintings and sculpture. The Nazis have had over six years to plunder the riches of Europe. They've looted art from personal collections and museums, stealing almost the entire cultural heritage of Western civilization. Now, I know I might not look it, but... My college minor was art history, and it gives me grief to no end when I think about everything that's been lost in this war. All the art that's been destroyed in the never-ending artillery barrages and bombing raids. Two days ago, our intelligence intercepted a communique from the regional governor ordering the destruction of the Steinberg salt mine and all the artwork inside. The garrison's commander responded enthusiastically that the place would be wired with enough explosives to destroy not only the mine, but part of the adjoining town as well. Sadly, this situation is not without precedent. Last year, after the invasion, Hitler ordered the general in charge of Paris, von Dietrich von Cholitz, to burn the city lest it fall into Allied hands. For history's sake, Cholitz refused and declared Paris an open city, saving it from certain destruction. Unfortunately, what Cholitz did was an aberration in the way your typical German officer thinks. There's a jeep waiting for you outside, Lieutenant. Stop this madman from carrying out his orders. Dismissed. <laughs> 